Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is a brand new series that I'm starting on my channel and this tutorial is all about Puppeteer. What is Puppeteer? Why do you need to learn it? What are the different use cases? And we'll do a lot of hands-on examples around it. We will learn everything from basic to advanced use cases as part of this particular series with a lot of code to make sure that you're comfortable using Puppeteer. This is the first part of the series where I'll be covering about the introduction. But if you see, I've already covered and listed all the topics that I will be covering as part of this series from installation to basic uh, web scrapping to automation to unit testing to generating PDF, screenshots, getting source code, form submission and much, much more. OK, so you will learn everything about Puppeteer, like its capabilities, its advantages, its functionality, features, everything in this 25 part series. I'm keeping them really small and simple, but with lots of code and hands on examples to make it easy to learn and master Puppeteer. With that being said, let's get started with the first topic that I have, that is introduction. What is Puppeteer? Puppeteer is a Node.js library that provides high-level API for controlling and automation of web browsers. Which means we can write our code and tell the browser what it needs to do automatically. For a few examples could be open a browser, go to google.com, type some query, get the results. The other example could be go to w3schools.com, take a screenshot of all the HTML pages, etc. When you're doing a real-time enterprise application, you might want to test and simulate mobile devices, see how it looks, check all the UI elements, and also perform end-to-end -end testing. All of that is possible with Puppeteer. Puppeteer is developed by the Chrome team at Google. Puppeteer uses the latest versions of Chromium, which is the open source version of Google Chrome. It supports wide range of browser automation features like navigating pages, interacting with elements, form filling, clicking buttons, handling events, and much more. We can allow Puppeteer to take screenshots, capture PDFs, and even generate videos of the rendered pages. It's used for visual testing and monitoring as well. It's really powerful in terms of debugging and troubleshooting, tracing network inter requests, you can do inter HTTP interceptors and much more. Puppeteer supports both headless and headful execution. I'll show you both variations when we start doing some hands-on activities. Puppeteer can be integrated into any of the existing popular testing frameworks like Zest or Mocha. Puppeteer has a lot of good community support and extensive documentation. I'm sure this tutorial will definitely help you learn and master Puppeteer. That being said, I'll keep all these uh, topics short, especially the ones which are containing theory, but I'll focus more on the hands-on exercises. In the next uh, episode, we will talk about the installation and basic check and running the application. I hope you will learn. I hope you will master Puppeteer with me, and I will try to cover all the use cases that you will require for you to get successful in learning Puppeteer. Thank you so much for joining in this episode. Let's join me in the next episode where I'll talk about the Puppeteer installation and running it. Thank you again.